Hi, my name is Dan, and this is a video about part of a block in downtown Hartford, Connecticut, and how it's changed over the last 170 years or so. You can find the picture I'm showing here on the Trumbull Street side of the XL Center in downtown Hartford. It's an enlarged and colorized version of an old photograph of Asylum Street taken around 1911. This view is east towards Main Street, so Trumbull Street was behind the photographer. Back then, the street was densely packed, but today, all of the buildings on the left, or north side, east of the Brownstone Building, are all gone, replaced by a parking lot. I plan to talk about that side of the street in another video, in the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about the right or south side of Asylum Street. From the corner of Trumbull up to where today there's a parking garage with retail stores that was erected by the Hartford National Bank in the 1960s. In another future video, I want to cover the things that were where the parking garage is today. And beyond that is the alley where Savitz jewelry used to be. If you want to hear about Savitz and the buildings from Savitz eastward to Main Street, check out my last video, which I'll link in the description below. Turning to the south side of Asylum Street, from Trumbull to the parking garage, what was it like back in the old days? Well, this stretch was once where some of Hartford's most notable clothing, furniture, and hardware stores were located. Many of the older buildings still survive today, but some of them have been greatly altered over the years. Much has changed in this vicinity since 1911, but there are still two Italianate-style buildings on the northeast and southeast corners of Asylum and Trumbull Streets. The brownstone building on the left in this picture was built in 1861 for the Charter Oak Bank. The building on the right was built circa 1855 by Timothy Allen, who also erected the Allen House Hotel on the opposite corner of Asylum and Trumbull. The Allen House doesn't survive today, but I did make a video about it, which I'll link in the description below. The surviving circa 1855 building is most notable for the cast iron facade on its corner, which was put in in 1896-7. If you've watched my other videos on this part of Asylum Street, you'll know that the area was particularly popular for clothing stores. In 1891, this particular corner was occupied by the clothing store of Willis and Wilson which commissioned architect Isaac A. Allen Jr. to design the two-story cast-iron front with its broad display windows. It was manufactured by the George S. Lincoln Company at the Phoenix Ironworks on Arch Street. In 1909, Willis and Wilson sold their store to three young men who had previously been connected with the Luke Horsfall Company. I'll be talking more about horse falls in a few moments, but these three men were Stackpole, Moore, and Tryon. The Stackpole, Moore, Tryon Company would occupy this corner from 1909 until 1989, and the store is still in business today a few doors north on Trumbull Street. Now let's continue east along Asylum Street. The corner building has a longer facade along Asylum than it does along Trumbull. There was a sign for a store called Bruce Philly and Company along this side of the building back when Teddy Roosevelt passed by on August 22, 1902. 
This was the famous visit when President Roosevelt rode through the streets of Hartford in that newfangled invention, the electric automobile. It wasn't a Tesla, but a Hartford-made Columbia Electric Victoria Phaeton. The president proceeded north up Trumbull Street. But in this photograph of the parade, we'll focus on the corner building he's just passed by. Incidentally, R.P. Kenyon and Company, the furriers I mentioned in my last video, was one of the tenants in the building in 1902. As for Bruce Philly and Company, although they had a large sign along the upper floors of this building, the store was actually located in the building just to the east, which was built circa 1860. A furniture store at 103 Asylum Street, Bruce Philly and Company opened in 1891, the same year as Willis and Wilson. Bruce Philly and Company shared the building with Horsfall and Rothschild's clothing store which opened at 93 to 95 Asylum Street in the 1880s. Horsfall and Rothschild originally sold hats, but had later expanded their offerings. This building that in 1902 was shared by Bruce Philly and Company and Horsfall and Rothschild, like a number of other buildings in downtown Hartford at the time, was owned by the Corning Estate. In 1897, the same year that the Willis and Wilson building was given a new metal facade, this building also received one on its first two stories. Like the one on the corner building I mentioned earlier, this facade was also designed by Isaac A. Allen Jr. Let's jump ahead a few years. This is the original version of the colorized photo I started this video with. It shows some of the business changes that had taken place since Teddy Roosevelt's visit. In 1904, Horsfall had purchased the interest of his late partner Rothschild, and the business would continue as the Luke Horsfall Company. In 1909, the same year Stackpole, Moore, and Tryon had bought out Willis and Wilson, Bruce Philly and Company merged with the George W. Flint Company to form the massive new furniture store called the Flint Bruce Company. The enlarged store kept the old address at 103 Asylum Street, but it needed more space. Around the corner, a new, seven-story building was erected at 140 to 150 Trumbull Street. It was built by the Corning Estate on land where the old Corning House, demolished in 1901, had stood. The new building, designed by Isaac A. Allen, Jr., still stands today. It connected in the rear to the building at 93 to 103 Asylum Street. Almost all of the new building was occupied by the Flint Bruce Company, which now had two entrances, the old one at 103 Asylum Street and a new one at 150 Trumbull Street, now the entrance to Armstrong Rockwell Fine Jewelry. Flint Bruce's neighbor on Asylum Street, Horse Falls, also moved into the new building, occupying part of two floors and the basement at the address 140 Trumbull Street, where Trumbull Kitchen is today. Like Flint Bruce, Horse Falls linked their new space to their original store on Asylum Street. This view north, up Trumbull Street, shows the 1909 building with the signs for Horse Falls and Flint Bruce. The Luke Horsefall Company became Horse Falls, Inc. in 1934. While the store would continue at Asylum Street into the 1970s, it only occupied the space on Trumbull Street into the early 1920s. 
After that, various other businesses would occupy 150 Trumbull Street over the years. As for Flint Bruce, that store left its dual addresses at 103 Asylum and 140 Trumbull in 1943. Its two buildings were then taken over by the Kane Furniture Company and later by a branch of Ludwig Baumann's Furniture Stores in 1950. Baumann merged with another chain to become Baumann Spears in 1953. But just two years later, that Hartford location was acquired by another furniture store, Shore Brothers. Founded in Hartford in 1908, Shore Brothers had been located since 1923, just a little further up Trumbull Street at number 196. After moving, Shore Brothers would continue to occupy 150 Trumbull Street and 103 Asylum Street into the 1980s. Let's return to Asylum Street. Like the 1909 building on Trumbull Street, the Flint, Bruce, and Horsfall building does survive, but it has been significantly altered. The same is true of the two buildings just east of it at 89 and 81 Asylum. This is a view of the area today. The Horse Falls section at 93 Asylum has been completely transformed over the years. These changes included a new facade installed by the clothing store in 1947. Other alterations had followed. The section of the original building at 103 Asylum, home to Flint Bruce and later Shore Brothers, retains part of the building's original architecture. Its two upper stories and bracketed cornice retain the structure's original 19th century Italianate style features. The bare section on the second story marks where the building's old glass and copper facade by Isaac A. Allen Jr. had been. As I said, this once extended across the adjacent section as well and would have been a good complement to the similar facade that still survives on the corner of Trumbull and Asylum Streets. The next building to the east, at 87 to 89 Asylum Street, is Cone's Building, which was erected in the mid-19th century and had a fourth floor added in 1872 when it was remodeled for J. H. and E. W. Cohn's hardware store. The facade on the building's lower levels has been significantly altered, but it retains its original upper floor and elaborate rooftop cornice, which displays the words Cohn's Building. J. H. and E. W. Cohn's origins went back to 1840 with the partnership of Bragaw and Blake at the corner of Main and Kinsley Streets, which later moved to 22 to 24 Asylum Street. The members of the partnership changed over the years, becoming Terry and Cohn in 1861 when J. H. Cohn entered the firm. As the Hartford Current newspaper described it, looking back on the company's history in an article from February 11, 1920, quote, In 1850, the concern imported about seven-eighths of the goods sold. Twenty years later, seven-eighths of the goods was made in this country. So rapidly had hardware manufacturing increased in the United States. Many of the old-fashioned goods obtained from abroad had been superseded by much better goods made in this country. This desirable result had been largely accomplished by the new protective tariff." Unquote. As The Current also related in 1920, quote, Upon two occasions during the Civil War, it is said, every employee of the store volunteered 
and went into the Union Army, leaving only the two proprietors to run the store. When Fort Sumter was fired upon by the rebels in 1861, it is said that every employee enlisted, and in 1862, after General Pope's defeat at the Second Battle of Bull Run, when President Lincoln called for one million volunteers, every employee enlisted, unquote. In 1868, Terry retired, and J. H. Cohn was joined in the partnership by his brother, William E. Cohn, who was also a Civil War veteran. Four years later, the store moved into the Cohn's building, which they would occupy until 1920, when the store moved to 108 Allen Street. W. E. Cohn, who died in 1925, became commander of the 1st Regiment, Connecticut National Guard. He also held various public offices in Hartford, and an annex to the Brown School on Market Street was named for him. J. H. and W. E. Cohn's hardware store continued in operation on Allen Street until it went out of business in 1933. I'll end this video by talking about the building at 81 Asylum Street. The current building on the site dates to 1929. It replaced an earlier 19th century structure, which at some point had acquired an elaborately decorated cornice. A notable business to occupy that building over the years was H.F. Corning & Company dealers in leather goods, which was here from 1876 until 1922. The company had been started all the way back in 1812 by Henry F. Corning's grandfather, Ralph Goodwin. The picture on the right was taken in 1922 when H. F. Corning & Company on the ground floor was having its removal sale. On the floor above was Dr. George T. Hanna's Careful Dentists, which advertised its painless dentistry. The building had become vacant by the time it was demolished in 1929. It was replaced by an arcade with shops that connected to the Riverside Trust Company, which was located just to the south on Pearl Street. The building was completely rebuilt when it became home to Leopold Morse Clothing Store's University Shop in 1937. The new design was by Harry D. Ross, general manager of the Leopold Morse Company, who was described by The Current as, quote, an authority on architecture of men's clothing stores, unquote. Hartford's branch of the Leopold Morse chain had previously been located at 34 Asylum Street, and in 1949 it would move to 60 Asylum Street. The section of Asylum Street I've talked about in this video has changed a lot over the years. While some of the buildings have been greatly altered, others still maintain historical features, most notably the building on the corner with its 1890s cast iron storefront. The building is listed in the National Register of Historic Places. If you enjoyed this video, please press the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching.